Romans 9 verse 32. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, excuse me, wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, well, they stumbled at the stumbling stone. They stumbled at the stumbling stone. That's what they got. That's what a lot of people don't realize. Listen, man, understand the, understand the importance of this stuff here. Understand the importance of knowing who you are. Understand of knowing your nationality, your heritage, your lineage. Who are you? Where you come from and where you going? What are your forefathers about? Who are they? they don't tell me you're African. Because I'm going to ask you what country in Africa you come from. African American. There's no such thing. Who are you, man? Know your history and where you're going. You don't know. You can't claim Africa. That's madness. Genesis 33. Romans 9.33, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone, a stumbling stone. A stone of stumbling, you know? And a rock of all things. And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Anybody that believe on Christ, they're never going to be ashamed. They're not going to be ashamed no matter who come by, no matter who walk the streets, no matter how they feel about it. Got no shame in this game here, baby. Show what you got. Read it for the time. Romans 6 and 1, right? What shall, we say? what shall we say then? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Right. That grace may abound? Shall we continue being wicked? That grace may abound? Shall we continue being insincere? And think we're going to get saved? What are you looking for, man? What are you looking for if you now, if you leave the house as a youth and your father told you, don't go here, here, or there. If you come back, or if you went here, here, or there, I'm going to bust your butt. I'm going to beat you up, man. You went out from the house, and you went here, here, and there. You didn't do what your father said do. Your father saw you go here, here, and there. Now you, on your way home, what do you think? You know what you do? You start to forecast grievous things. You're afraid. You're scared. You say, wow, boy. Oh, my father. <laughs> wow. I got time I get home, boy. I'm going to be jacked up. Oh, my daddy going to deal with me. And you're scared. you got all this stuff in your head about how you're going to be punished. Because you know how your daddy punished you. If you have one of those daddies, a real daddy, that lock you down. A lot of us had no daddy. Sad case. A lot of us had no daddy. And the mama couldn't put no fear in me. That's how I went. And my mama didn't have no daddy. And mama didn't put the fear in me. Because as I grew up and got big, she's just a little woman. And she getting old too. Might be my mama, but I know what. She better not come up in my face. I'm not talking about me. My daddy's still with my mother. <laughs> Fortunately, <laughs> right, right, <laughs> Fortunately, but it's a sad case with some of us brothers. The father's not around. But I can listen. I got, I got a couple sons like that. Mama got rid of me. Now I'm not blaming all on her. We didn't make it work. She got the son. She don't want to send the boy to me. Late in the game now, they left the little older, they're 18, 17, 16. They're getting big. I had one call me up and say, I'm going to send your boy. You need to get him for a little while. <laughs> it's late in the game. <laughs> it's late in the game, you understand? I mean, man, he come, he come around, I mean, I'm a grown man. It's my son. He ain't got no win with me, but he might be determined to be wrong now. He don't want to hear me, even though I'm going to talk to him. And if he want, I'll give him a pair of gloves so he can, you know, see what he got. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I can straighten him out if necessary. But the point of it, I mean, it's no big thing. It's my boy. I'll bust him up. I want to bust him up anyway because he don't know me. He need to know me. The other little boys know me because I used to bust them up. You understand? But he don't know me. I know you think he can talk slick. I got children like that. Just I didn't raise them. It's sad, man. You understand? I feel bad about it. They think I don't even care about children. But listen, let me, let me. I got children, man, that are grown. Over 20 years, I've been feeling like this. 
Over 20 years, I feel like this. They just start to get to find out. They just start to wake up to this stuff, man, man. 20 years, I've been feeling the hurt and the pain of it. They just start to kick it in. Show them what you got. All right, brother, how you doing, all right? Romans 6 and 1. Come on. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Is that what we're going to do? We're going to continue in sin that grace may come around? We don't know. Most I forbid. The Lord forbid that. Mean it. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? How should we live any longer therein? We're dead to sin. How can we keep living and do sin? Commit sin. We don't know. Romans 6 and 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Yahweh Shai Christ, right? We're baptized into his death. Baptized into his death, we are. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, right? That like as Christ was raised up from the dead right? by the glory of the Father, right? Even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. We're going to watch the walking news of life. Check this out, we are. Romans 6 and 5, come on. Where we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So that's the whole thing. We got to have foresight. Spiritual brothers, spiritual sisters, they got vision. They don't have dreams. They got vision. Understand the difference. The dream is something that you just conjure up in your own head. Maybe from TV shows you watch or people you've met, and you start dreaming. Wow, I want to be a basketball star. Wow, I want to be on a, a fear factor. Uh, yeah, I want to be on, you know, you dream about everything they offer you. You dream, I want to be a singer. I want to be a rap star. I want to be a rap star. Brother must be get busted selling drugs and do a time. Now he's a time, he got a foot. He right, right. I got lyrics. Brother, come on with a, a notebook full of lyrics for rap. Right, go, I mean, don't, you know, it don't, it don't make sense. Now you write books for people to follow. You write lyrics for people. To, you want everybody to buy it, buy your record, and people to listen to their garbage. Because you find a word, you find out that food match with mood. And you. <laughs> <laughs> the brother found out that food rhymes with food and he put it right here. He puts it. He put it on. He said, give me a beat. Give me a beat. <laughs> That's a dream. That's a dream. Alright? <laughs> the vision. The vision is we know Christ is coming. <laughs> Listen, the vision is we know Christ is coming. When he get there, he's going to give us life eternal. We got that vision. We can see the righteous reigning up and ruling the earth according to the law of Moses. We have that vision. We can see far off. We can see what the prophets seen. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Amos. We can see what Moses seen. We see it. Like King David and Solomon, show what you got out. Romans 6 and 5, right? For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, right? We shall also, in the likeness, we shall also, be, we shall, excuse me, Romans 6 and 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, right? Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. The old man is crucified with Christ. See that? That's bad conditioning. My back hurt. I'm standing up. So I kind of want to give it a little break. That's when we get in this concrete jungle. This whole set is against us, man. This whole environment is against us. And we can't see that. This whole vibration is against us. It's an evil set. And we need to realize that and call it for what it is. The people that run this country are wicked people. They praise the devil. Barack Obama is the same. A devil worshiper. And we need to understand those things, man. And know that. He don't stand for the truth. Read what you got, huh? Romans 6 and 6. Yes. Excuse me. Romans 6 and 7. Yes. For he that is dead is free from sin. You're free from sin if you're dead. If you die tomorrow, you can't commit the evil that you commit the earth today. Because you're dead. Read on. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. If we die with Christ, 
then we live with them. So what? We got records of Christ's life and how he dealt. We got instructions on what we should do according to Christ. We just read down Luke the sixth chapter, he broke it down. If they if give to anybody to ask you, man, lend to them. If they expect you turn down the cheek. You can do these things, man. You can have that vision. Listen, we got that vision already. Then somebody walk up here while we out here in the street and slap me in the face. Pow! I gotta turn the other cheek. I haven't done it before, with the grace of the Lord won't be no problem. But I gotta tell you, the guy that come and try to slap me, <laughs> I'm gonna try to block it. All right, I'm gonna block it. <laughs> I'm gonna block it. I'm gonna say, hold on, hold on. Whoa, whoa. I'm gonna block it. And if you bring two or three guys, I might run. Let's run. Go. All that stuff to avoid the fight. All that stuff to avoid the evil. All that stuff, I, that, that's, I might make it comical, but I'm serious. That's what I'm gonna try to do. Outside of that, let me give you some other, another perspective. I might try to chump you out in spirit. I might try to chump your spirit, but I'm not going to touch nobody. I'm not going to touch nobody. I'm not a young child. I've had plenty of fights in the earth. Plenty of fights in the earth. They don't need to prove to nobody how bad or good I fight. I don't need to prove to nobody how bad or good I fight. If I want to go have a fight, I go to a gym and say, let's get some gloves and let's have a workout. We can fight and still be cool afterwards. Outside of that, yeah, I'm going to turn down the cheek. I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try not to get hit. I might slip that. Oh, 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 oh. And run. Who knows? The thing about it, I want to I want to be righteous. And if that approaches me, I'm going to try to handle that righteously. Bro, what you got? Give me what you got. Romans 6 and 8, right? Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we, we shall also live with him. Know that Christ being raised from the dead, died no more. Died when Christ raised from the dead, he died no more. Go to the 10th verse, read on. Romans 6 and 10, time out. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. Check that time, bro. For in that he liveth, read it again, huh? Romans 6 and 10, right? For in that he died, he died unto sin once. He died unto sin once. Check this out, huh? And not. Ah, Rashid. Check this out, Go ahead. Romans 6 and 10. For that he died, he died unto sin once. Right. For in that he liveth, he liveth unto the most high. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Brother died on the sins once. You only can die on the sin once, all right? You only can die on the sins once. <laughs> the point of the matter is, if you die in your life while you in while you have a wicked mind, then you die to sin. You're dead. That's how you're gonna be raised up back under destruction. If you kill that mindset now, if you kill that mindset now while you're still breathing, and reform your mind, 12 and 1, go on. And reform your mind, check this out. Read that one more time. Romans 6 and 10. For that he died, he died unto sin once. He died unto sin once, read on. And in that he liveth, he liveth unto the Most High. He liveth unto the Heavenly Father forever. Read it. Romans 12 and 2, 12 and 1. Right. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Your body, your body, head to toe. You present your whole body a living sacrifice. Read on. Holy, acceptable unto the Most High. Holy being pure, acceptable to the Heavenly Father. Not acceptable unto men, but acceptable to the Heavenly Father according to this word. Read on. Which is your reasonable service. That's your reasonable service. What else are you supposed to give up? Who are you? What you got to refrain from giving to the Lord? You say, nah, I ain't going to give that up. That's too much for me to give. Who are you? Where you come from? Where you think you are? We are not. And be not conformed to this world. Don't worry about what's going on in the earth, man, because this earth ain't going nowhere. America got major problems, and they're going to fall down with it. If you want to fall with America, then stick with the way they did, the way they live. The lies that they tell, the hypocrisy that they commit. The deceiver, the deceivableness, or the, the lies, the deceiver, same thing, right? Lies, the deceiver. <laughs> that's what's gonna bring them down. But that's their, that's their high, that's their high mark. 
to success. They lie. They tell other people one thing and do another. Finish that up. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. By renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what is that good, that acceptable and perfect will of the most time. And that's where we're at. And with that, praise the Lord, we see you next week. Now, brothers and I back at you with this Bible. The word of the Heavenly Father, scriptures, the Bible. That's what this is all about. Christ and the most high power. And his righteousness, right work. That's where we're at. We're in Galatians, the second chapter. Brother Lady's gonna pick it up from the 17th verse. Right, let's go straight through, please. Galatians 217. Right? But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Right. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Is Christ the minister of sin? The most high forbid. Right. Hold that. Right. Give me Romans 6 chapter. Read on. Give it again. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, right. we ourselves are found as sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Check this out. While we seek... To be justified by Christ. That's the whole vibration. We call on Christ and claim that we follow Christ. If while we follow Christ, now we commit evil acts, is Christ, is, is he justifying sin or wickedness? Listen, the hypocrisy is outrageous because there's no possible way that I can call myself a Christian and then do things that is contrary to the Bible. If I do things contrary to the Bible, I need not call myself a Christian. Why should I call myself a Christian? Because I'm a hypocrite. That's hypocrisy. Read one more time, huh? Galatians 2.17. Right. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Christ. The most high forbid. Christ is not the minister of sin. The Lord forbid that kind of action. Give me our first chapter 3, 1 through 11. Right? Show them what you got out. 6 and 1, this whole chapter. Romans 6 and 1. Right? What well, shall we say then? Shall we continue with sin that grace may abound? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? They got this whole vibration, right? Hold on. They got this whole vibration now. Uh, uh, you know what it says, just confessing with your mouth. Right, 10 what? Read that right here. This is Romans 10 and 10. Right? With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mind. Hear now, check this out. I'm going to let this brother read this scripture, this passage. Read on. Romans 10 and 10. But with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Right? Now, the, 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 the religious people, the people in the, the religion, and call himself Baptist, Protestant, Episcopalian, and stuff like that. They would break this down and say, "But man with his heart, talk about this blood vessel or this blood vessel in his body." But in fact, we didn't get Romans 10 and 10, right? <laughs> Romans 10 and 10, right? But with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. But with the mind, man believeth unto right works. With the mind, man believeth on the right works, read on. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So then now you got the religious people, they say, all you got to do is confess to the Lord, and you just, as your, your Savior, Lord and Savior, and you'll be saved. I think there's another scripture like that. Yeah. Right? You yeah, pull that one out. Bring it back, Romans 6 and 1. Romans 6 and 1, right? What shall we say then? Shall we continue with sin that grace may abound? Shall we continue doing evil acts that grace may abound? Can we say that it's right for me to commit evil so that grace can abound? How can I claim to be in Christ and still tell lies? But yet, the lies I tell, here, check this out. How many Christians do you know that that still celebrate Christmas? They still buy presents and gifts for their children and everybody they know. And at 
the same time they'll tell you that Santa Claus is a lie. So how can I call myself a Christian and still celebrate Christmas? It's hypocrisy. It doesn't light up. It doesn't make sense. They don't go together. We are not. Romans 6 to 3. We got a church. We got a church next door to our church. And when they go to this church, I mean, they stay on front of this It look like pimps and hoes. It look like pimps and hoes. You got brothers with big brims and suits and, and long jails on their jacket. And you got women with mini skirts and spits all the way up their legs. And they talk about they're going to church. Hairdos and pumps and, and, and stilettos in church. We you know not. Romans 6 to 2, right? Romans 6 to 1. But what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Shall we continue being wicked that grace may abound? How can we wear harness attire and expect to be accepted? We do The most I forbid. The Lord forbid that, man. You're not going to be evil and, 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 and get salvation. You're not going to commit wicked acts and be saved. It doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't make sense. We do not most God forbid, right? How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? I mean, you know, we need to pull up our pants or something. How can we just be dead to sin? I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. The whoredom is outrageous. I mean, who, everybody let their pants hang down now, men and women. How can you come out and present yourself indecently and still represent Christ? It doesn't happen. You can't come out with indecent, I mean, horrorous exposure of your breast or your, your thigh and expect to be can saved. You can't expect that. Tell me where you're at. Romans 6 and 3. Yes. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Yahweh Shah Christ right. were baptized into his death. We were baptized into his death, man. We were baptized into Christ's death. Read on. Romans. Okay, yo, bro, you can walk through, man. Don't worry about that. Romans 6 and 4, right? Therefore we are buried with them by baptism. We are buried with Christ by baptism. Into death. Into death, read it. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, right? even so we also should walk in newness of life. That we should walk in newness of life, read it. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, right? we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. We are going to be raised up. The same way Christ was raised up. Listen, the Lord took Christ up into his chariots. Right in the right, right in the presence of his of his disciples. Right in the presence of his, all the apostles and his disciples. He said, Lord, beat them up. Beat me up, Scotty. That's the same way we're getting out of here, man. The Lord's gonna beam us up. The ones that are still living, the ones that are still living and not dead, the Lord's gonna save us, man. Right out of the earth. All right, bro, how you feeling? All right, all right nice. We all, man. Romans 6 and 6. Uh -huh. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Our old man is crucified with, with, with the flesh. Our old man is crucified with Christ. Really? That the body of sin might be destroyed. Right? That henceforth we should not serve sin. That we should serve sin. The body of sin should be destroyed. That we should serve sin no more, man. We should, we, we should just think it's all right to be evil. We know it's wrong to still do wrong. That's a wicked act. Hold this. Give me 12, 20 Romans. Show them what you got. First John 3 and 1. Right? Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Yeah, check this out, man. Behold, recognize. Get into this group and behold what manner of love the Heavenly Father has bestowed upon us. The love that he brings down, man, the love that he's shown upon us in the earth while we're here. Think about the lives that we have led. And we're still here. We know not. That we should be called the sons of the Most High. Right? Therefore, the world knew us not. The world don't know us, read it. Because it knows us, knows him not. Because it don't know the Heavenly Father. As you said, see us come out wearing garbage and everybody looking at the corner there, what's that about? As they, they don't know what, they ask us and we tell them we're Christians. They don't see Christians like this. What's that all about? They don't know the Heavenly Father. They don't know this word. So they don't know us. Well, all this stuff that we put out, we show, we read it right out of the Bible. It is the word of the Father. That's His rule. 
I mean, if you don't know, check it out and accept it. It's the real deal. Behold what men of love the Lord has bestowed upon us. Read on. First John, 3 and 2. <coughs> right? We love. Now are we the sons of the Most High. Uh -huh. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. Right? But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Right? But we shall see him as he is. That's how it's going to come down, I, I give. Our brothers and sisters, yes, they be over here. Check us out, man. Because when Christ comes down, we don't know when, but check it. Read that one more time. First John 3 and 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of the Most High. Now are we the sons of the Heavenly Father because we're doing the work of Christ. Now we're the sons of the Most High Power because we're walking in the Spirit of Christ. And we know we're the sons of the Heavenly Father because we're doing His work. Read it. And it doeth not yet appear what we shall be. And it doeth yet appear. You guys can't realize it doesn't appear what we're going to be. But if you check the Bible out and Lord said he was going, what he's going to do with his servants, He's gonna make them his battle axe of war, man. He gonna make them. He gonna make them his long arm of salvation. It do not yet appear what we shall be. The work we're putting in, you can't imagine how this thing is gonna blow us up. We do not. But we know that when he shall appear, right, we shall be like him. So we know when Christ shall appear, we're gonna be just like him. But we shall see him as he is. So we're gonna see him just like he is. Come on, dude. He's going to be strange to all you people that call yourself Baptist, Protestant, Episcopalian, Lutheran, Rastafarian, Muslim. He's going to come back and say, I don't know you, man. Who are you? And you're going to say, I don't know you because I, I don't know you, Lord. I'm sorry. It's not going to save you. Right now is the time to wake up and recognize who you are and what you're doing in the earth. Check it out, huh? First John 3 and 3. Come on. And every man that had this hope in him purifies himself. Everybody, every brother and sister that's locked into this group and they got this hope, this prayer, this faith in them. That's what's going to save them, man. This faith that doesn't waver, can't be right, steadfast, all unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Read on, huh? And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, right? even as he is pure. He purifies himself, man. Hold this up. Hold this. Give me 1 Peter 1.20, right? Every man that has this hope in him, he purifies himself, man. They so expect to see Christ like he really is. Come back and shock the whole world out of the east, man. Cover the whole heavens, dark in the sky. Show me what you got. 1 Peter. 1 and 20. Second Peter, 120. Knowing this first. First Peter, 1 and 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth. This is how you go. Check this out. This is how you purify your soul. Your soul is your imagination and your character. Your soul makes up, makes up your whole vibration, what you present to people. That's the things you imagine and the character that you show off, that you put off to people. That's your soul. It's how do you purify your soul? Because the people that think they, uh, 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 the people that think they look good and that nobody can deny them is evident when they walk the streets. The people that play the whore is evident when they walk the streets. The people that just start to drink and get drunk and party is evident when they walk the streets. How do you purify your soul? Get your head out of these dreams. Or being drunk all the time. Or thinking that you such a star. Yeah, I read Yeah, that nobody don't know. How do you purify your soul, your imagination, and your character? Show them what you got, huh? First Peter 1 and 22. Right. Seeing you have purified your soul in obeying the truth. In obeying the truth, man. You are sincere and you follow the word hard as you can. You lock down this truth, man, hard as you can. You, know, you bust up the strength you have inside. You bust up the courage that you have inside. And you stand for what's right. You don't care what he thinks. You don't care what she thinks. You don't care how they look at you either. 
You stand up like a man. Read it out. See, yeah, purify your soul and obey the truth. Right through the spirit. Through the spirit, read it. Unto unfeigned love. Unto unfeigned love. Of the righteous. Because you love your people. You love the righteous. And you love Christ. And nobody's going to break you up for that, man. You're in the Christ. It's about this word. It doesn't matter what nobody else thinks. Where their head is at? It's all about Christ and the Heavenly Father. Read all that. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. One more time, that's one verse. First Peter 1.22. Come on. Seeing you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. Unto unfeigned love of the bright. Come on. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. That's where this is at, man. And we are here, we are here in the spirit of love. We're out here in the spirit of love because love is as strong as death. Love is as strong as death, man. And we are here, it don't matter, our life don't matter to us, man, because we are here in the spirit of love. So we put it out. We're putting it out. Come on out. 23. Being born again. Being born again. Not of corruptible seed. Not of corruptible seed. Call myself a Baptist or a Protestant or Episcopalian or a Catholic. Where's that at in the Bible? Where's that at in the Bible? Not no corruptible seed by some religion. That's garbage in the earth. And it's corruptible. Because all these religious preachers are liars. Read that. Being born again, right? Not of corruptible seed, right? But of incorruptible. Incorruptible by the word of the most time, which liveth and abideth forever. The word. It's this word that's gonna work it, man. It's this word that's in this Bible that's gonna shut you down or lift you up. Or lift you up. Tell me finish it up. All, right. all flesh is as grass, and the glory of man as the flower of the grass. For all flesh is as grass, Mark. And the grass withers, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. <laughs> That's a big boy of scriptures there, huh? The word of the Lord endureth forever. Let's all man is as grass, and the grass withereth away. The grass goes. It lives and dies, it lives and dies, every year, up and down. But the word of the Heavenly Father, it liveth forever, it never dies. This word don't die, it's not going nowhere. And that's this word that's being preached unto you. Check it out, bring it back. Show what you got. Romans 12 and 20. Bring it back, give it Galatians 2, 17 again. Hold that first child, we'll get that back. Come on. Yeah. Romans 12 and 20. Yes. Therefore, if thy enemies hunger, feed them. Where up there? You said 12 and 20, right? No, I didn't. Pick up where you left off at. I was reading 6. 6, six that's what I want. Come on, 12 and 20. Finish that. Come on. Romans 6 and 4. Right. Therefore, we are buried with them by baptism come on, come on, come on. into death. Right. And like as Christ was raised up from the dead yes. by the glory of the Father, right. even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Check this out. As Christ was buried in the death, we're buried with them. We bear with them so we can walk and do this of life. We can take our life that we used to have and throw that down with Christ. Bury that life with Christ and we can walk in newness of life. Listen, because all these brothers that are our ages, that are our ages, and we got different age groups here. All these brothers that are our ages, and we got different age groups. I'm older than this brother, this brother's older than that brother. That brother's almost the same age. We got different age groups. All these brothers that are my age, they got to step up to this plate, man. Because the stuff they know, I know. The stuff they know, I know. But now they need to get to know what I know. Because they don't know this stuff in the Bible. The brothers his age, his peers, same order. They need to get to know what he knows, because he knows what they know. We lived those lives before. We did that already. Who has it? You ain't shoot, but then you ain't got nothing. And you ain't going nowhere. But fire and damnation. That's what's real. That's real. Show what you had, huh? Romans 6 and 5. Right? For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Right? Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with us. The old man is crucified with Christ. The old man is crucified. The whorish man, the, 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 the stealing man, the lying man is crucified with Christ. Hold that. Read that 217. 
Galatians 2.17. Right. But while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. How can we seek to be justified by Christ when yet we ourselves are doing wicked acts? How can we go to church and dress like a whore and call ourselves Christian? How can we go to self? How can we go to church being a man? How can we go to church with a big bottle of hat on? A big hat. And the Lord said, man don't wear hats. Man don't cover his head. He don't do that. How can you be that big of a hypocrite? Because the preacher is wearing a hat. Because the preacher's a hypocrite, man. He don't know we didn't get that. Galatians 2.17. Yes. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also found sinners. Right. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Is Christ the minister of sin? The most high forbid. No. He's not the minister of sin and neither are we. If you commit sin, while you pro pro profess yourself to be a Christian, that makes you a liar and a hypocrite, an evil doer, wicked. Bring it back. First John, show what you got. Romans 6 and 6. Right. Knowing this. They don't like to hear this stuff, man. Righteous and wicked. But it's real. It's in the earth. If you commit wicked acts, somebody gonna tell you about it. So the Lord said, brother up in the street, blow it out, let everybody hear it. Evil acts are recognized. We can see the wickedness as it appears. Show what you got, out. Romans 6 and 6, right? Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Our old man is crucified with Christ. The old man is crucified with Christ. We killed those lying men. You know what? That the body of sin might be destroyed. That the body of sin might be destroyed. You got to live in Christ proper, man. Follow this thing to the left. Don't worry about the earth. Embarrassed by what people think about you. You're embarrassed by what somebody else think about you. But yet, you walk the street looking like a total whore. And you tell me you're embarrassed to confess Christ. Well, yet you're shameless. You even ask your community, you don't care if anybody sees it. It's, you don't have no shame in that. It's Christ that you got a problem with. Show what you got out. Romans 6 and 6. Knowing this, <laughs> that our old man is crucified with him. Yes. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. We don't serve sin. We're killing that. We're dead to that. Look, man. Anything we see, know that it's sin, we got to back up. Step off. Kill it. Done. I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not involved. I'm a backing up. And if I used to have it, and if I used to have joy, if I used to enjoy myself committing these acts of sin, I got to exercise in myself the spirit of right works and refrain myself from mind iniquity, from mind wickedness that's caught up in me. Since my flesh is drawn to sin, I gotta fight within myself. The battle's within me, man. This is only about nobody else. The battle is within me. To stop the wrong and the evil acts. To stop lying. Read it out. Romans 6 and 7. Right? But he that is dead is free from sin. Yeah, he that's dead is free from sin. And we very well know. And we very well know. Would it be Michael Jackson? But he just died recently. Then the Coach Smith, would it be uh, my man who just dropped dead? Friday. Hey, no, he, he killed himself. A brother, a brother. Oh, that's, that's football, man. Oh, the football. The brother got killed off. Steve McNair, his woman, busted him in the head a couple times. Busted him in the head, busted him in the chest, busted him in the head, busted him in the head this side, and he cracked side. Busted me in the head this side, busted me in the chest two times here, and busted him over here one time. Bust him up. He's free from sin. Steve McNair is free from sin. He will not be playing football no more, or practicing on Saturday, or playing football for the best. Michael Jackson is free from sin. He's dead. He won't be a dope fiend no more. It's all gone. We don't know. Romans 6 and 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we also shall live with Him. We're going to live with Christ. When we're dead with Him, we're going to live with Him. Read it. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dies no more. He don't die no more. He's living forever. Life eternal, immortality. That's what we're playing for. That's our prize. That's what we're bargaining for. That's what we're here. To live and never die. We don't.
Death has no more dominion over him. Now I know with Christ. Death don't rule Christ anymore. The sin. Hold that. Give me this. Four. Go to 1 Corinthians 15. And give me 15. Yeah, 58. You know, so. Yeah. 1 John 3 and 2. Yes. Beloved. Now are we the sons of the Most High. Right. And it do have not yet appeared what we should be. Okay. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Right. And we shall see him as he is. And we're going to see Christ just like he is. Because we follow Christ in truth and in sincerity. Christ has no place in the Bible where he say he called himself a Baptist or a Protestant or Episcopalian or a Catholic or a Rastafarian or a Muslim. None of these things Christ called himself. None of these things Christ said you must go do. None of these things Christ said you should call yourself. So we see Christ as he is. We know him. Right, we know First John 3 and 3. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Right. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also in the law. Right. Whosoever committed sin transgresses the law. They cross the Lord. Read on. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Check this out. We're going to explore sin just a touch. Just a touch. Read that last verse again, huh? Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. Right. For sin is the transgression of the law. That's what it is. And the Mosaic law is righteous. But sin is a transgression of the law. Check this out. Read on out. First Corinthians 15 and 51. Right? Behold, I show you a mystery. Now hear what the Lord say. Go show us a mystery. Read it. We shall not all sleep. We're not all going to sleep. All of us are not going to sleep. We are not going to sleep. Understand this proof. Understand the Bible. We are not going to sleep. We are not going to die. Everybody that lives in the earth is not going to die on the earth. Everybody will die in the earth. That's what they believe. They got this belief. The faithless people that live in the earth, they feel like this belief that we're going to die anyway. It don't matter. We're going to die like everybody else. It don't matter. The sense against all flesh is death. The sentence against all flesh is death. Where all of us will not die. Hold that what you got. Give me first Thessalonians 4. Show what you got. First Corinthians 15 and 51. Right. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We're not all gonna sleep. We know we shall all be changed. But we shall all be changed. Read it in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, in a moment, pop, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, at the last trump, read it, for the trumpet shall sound, because you better hold up, he that endures to the end shall be saved, at the last trump, come on, come on, you're going to be tried, we're going to be tried, all kind of ways, it doesn't matter, we're here to be tried, this is the build up, this right here is the build up, every week, we come out, every week, we're in the word, every week, all week, we exercise our righteousness in Christ, this is the build up, but when the trials and tribulations come, they're here already, but they're going to get heavier, read that last verse again, First Corinthians 15 and 52, in a moment, with the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, and we shall be changed, meaning, this corruptible must put on incorruption, stop, hold that, show them what you got, First Thessalonians 4, 15, right, 4, 14, well, if we believe that Christ died, if we believe that Christ died, come on, walk through his eye, good, come on, and rose again, right? Even so, them also which sleep in Christ will the most high bring with them. So when Christ, if we believe, we believe that Christ died and they rose him from the dead three days later, the Lord did that. He rose him up from the dead and took him up into the heavens that he's living forevermore. We believe that. Then we must believe that everybody that died that was righteous before Christ, after Christ, all the brothers and sisters that died in Christ, he gonna bring them with him. When he come, they're going to come with him. They're going to come with him. Read it again, huh? First Thessalonians 4.14. Right. For if we believe that Christ died and rose again, 
Even so, them also would sleep in Christ, would the Most High bring with him. He gonna, they gonna bring me, they gonna come with Christ out of the east, Peter. For this we shall be saying to you, by the word of the Lord, right? And we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So we're not gonna prevent them which are asleep. We which are alive and we may, meaning we that are living and still are uh, holding this word up when Christ comes. But when Christ comes, there will be righteousness in the earth. He's lifting it up right now. He's building it right now. Walk through, sister. Straight through. You're all right. When Christ gets it, there's going to be righteousness in the earth. And we're going to see him like he is. We know not. First Thessalonians 4 and 16. Yes. For the Lord himself shall ascend from heaven right. with a shout Come on. and the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of the Most High and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Read on. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together Come on, Come on, with now. them in the clouds Come on, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So that's how it's going to go. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. We should all be changed. Right here, we which are alive, we're going to be caught up into the clouds. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. We're not going to prevent them which are dead already, they sleep in Christ. Check this out, show them what you got out. First Corinthians 15 and 53. But this corruptible must put on incorruption. This corruptible, this corruptible, and this corruptible must put on incorruption. Read on. And this mortal must put on immortality. This mortal, this mortal, and this mortal must put on immortality. Read on. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, right? But this mortal shall have put on immortality. Come on. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Right. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. That's where we are. We try to beat death and through the power of Christ. We're going to beat death through the power of Christ. How so? Read on. 1 Corinthians 15 and 55. Right. For death, where is thy sting? Where is thy sting? Read it. For grave, where is thy victory? Come on. The sting of death is sin. The sting of death is sin. The sting of death is sin. Sin is the transgression of the law. Bring it back. 1 John 3 and 5. Right. And you know, excuse me, for whosoever committed sin transgresses the law. Come on. For What's sin up? is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Come on. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. And no sin in Christ. Sin is the transgression of the law. And we know that sin is an evil act. Check this out. Read on. First Corinthians 15 and 56. Right? The sting of death is sin. The sting of death is sin. If you commit sin, Death will meet you. Death is at the door. If you're a sinner, expect to die. If you want to live, if you want to live, then stop committing sin. Don't be evil. It's an easy, easy formula. Find out what sin is, learn the difference between right and wrong, and don't do the wrong. Do what's right in Christ and live. And never die. Read it out. First Corinthians 15 and 56. Right? The sting of death is sin. The sting of death is sin. Read it. And the strength of sin is the law. And the strength of sin is the law. Because laws show you where you're sitting at and where you're not. And sin is the transgression of the law. The strength of sin is the law. So all you religious people that only live deal with the New Testament, that's why you guys are hypocrites and wicked. Because you don't know the law. The strength of sin is the law. We don't know. First Corinthians 15 and 57. Come on. But thanks be to the Most High. But thanks be to the Heavenly Father because He's rock. He's big. He's rock solid. Read it. Which gives us the victory. He giveth us the victory. He set us up, man. He put us in play. We're in position. Read it. Through our Lord. Yahweh Shai Christ. Through Christ, we got the play. Through Christ, we can get the victory. It's bad like that, man. It's big. It's heavy. And you can't understand because you still commit sin. You got to stop committing sin, man. There's no light sin. There's no easy sin. There's no small sin. All sin is evil. All sin is wicked. 
It's not just made upon earth to do as good as sin is not. I mean, nobody's perfect. But if you intentionally, in your heart, push out sin, you got a problem, man. You're wicked and evil, and it's presumptuous sin. It's willful sin, and willful sin is the great transgression. Because you willfully say, I don't care, I don't care about the Lord, I'm going to be evil. This is what I want to do, and that's willful sin. That there is a great transgression. It's against Christ. We don't know. First Corinthians 15 and 58. Right. Therefore, my beloved brethren, uh -huh. be ye steadfast. Be ye steadfast, man. Come on. Unmovable. Unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That you know your labor is not in vain in Christ. You know that you're going to get paid off properly in Christ. He's going to reward you for your work in righteousness. He's going to build you up in right works. It's a big time groove, man. Be steadfast. You got that? Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Romans the sixth chapter. Bring it back, God. First Peter. Hold that. Give me Galatians two seventeen. Then bring it. First, in Galatians two seventeen. Right. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found in sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Is Christ the minister of sin? That's the question. Do Christ minister sin? Man, listen, man. We're not them kind of brothers and sisters that corrupt, that corrupt the word of the Most High. And we want to frustrate the word of the Heavenly Father and just be blatantly wicked and go against this Bible, even though we carry it. We carry we we, we, we we preach with the Bible like every other preacher. Or we read out of the Bible like the other preachers don't. The only religious preachers got problems, man. They got major problems. They got people counting on them to preach to them right. They're paying them to bring it out right. And they can't do it. Because they start out lying by calling themselves religious. So when you got call yourself a Baptist or a Protestant or Episcopalian, that makes you a liar. There's no such thing in the Bible. No such thing according to Christ. Read it out. Galatians. 218. Right. But right. well, if I do it again, the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. Right. I make myself a wicked man. If I build again the things I destroy, I make myself evil. Oh, oh these fake cool ass jokers out there, man. I mean, this is ridiculous, boy. It's like, you know, these fake cool cats out here running run the streets of, run all the streets of New Haven or whatever the case may be, and they have no two cents about Christ. Fake cool. It's chump cool, simply dumb. And now in this world, man, you got a major problem, man. You're not in this Bible, you're an enemy of the Lord, and the Lord is on your backside. He's going to track you down. And all you jokers that like to drop your pants below your butt, the Lord going to stroke you proper. He's going to stroke you proper because you need it. Show them what you got, out. Galatians 2.18. Everybody want to drop their pants down below their butt, and the women do the same thing. Now you got a woman that do the same thing. She's a whore and you're evil. Check that out. Read on. Well, if I build again the things which I destroy, right? I make myself a transgressor. I make myself a transgressor. If I go against the stuff that I, that I cut out. If I now... That's the next verse. You finish that. Come back. First John. First John. Three. Go to the left. First John. Three. Five, and ye know, read it for four. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. They transgress the law, read it. For sin is a transgression of the law. Big time. You transgress the law. That's how sin. That's what sin is. People don't know what sin is. Sin is the transgression of the law. And sin brings death. Who don't know what sin is? That's transgression the Mosaic law. To go against the law of Moses is sin. And if you commit sin, you will die. That's how you die. Commit sin. That's how you be evil. Commit sin. Read on that. And you know that he was, the, he was manifested to take away our sin. Christ was manifested to take away our sins. Read it. And in him is no sin. And in Christ is no sin. Check that out. Read on. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Yeah, if you abide in Christ, if you live in Christ, if you confess Christ, then you don't sin. No little girl can't come up to you and get you to slide off with them for a night. One of them little whores, they can't do that to you. 
no matter how, how good she look or thick she look, she's a little whore and she can't get you to spot off for the, for the night. Because you know it's sick and you won't do that. But you got some cats, they can't refrain. Come to her, I walk straight to her, right. Some cats, they can't refrain. Any whore that come up to them, they're going to lay with them. Because they stupid, they don't know. Evil men entertain evil women. That's how it go, man. So the whore catch you out there. Read it out. Whosoever abides in him, sin it not. Yeah, if you abide in Christ, you don't sin. When you're really in Christ, you don't commit sin. You don't go to church dressed like a whore and you talk about you're in Christ. That's hypocrisy. Read on out. Whosoever sin it, I've not seen him. Yeah, who has, who's ever seen it? They haven't seen Christ, man. You're faking it. Read on. Neither know it. Then. They don't even know it. Come on. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that do a righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. I mean, how does it go? The thing is, everybody's so wicked. Everybody's it's so easy to commit sin. Nobody, they say there's nobody righteous. They say that nobody's righteous. You know, because the masses, they dwell, they deal, they deal in sin. But the brothers that commit righteous acts, they do the right things day after day, he's righteous. He that doeth righteous, right, is righteous as he as he's right. Read that again, huh? Little children, let no man deceive you, right? He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Praise the Lord for that, even as Christ is righteous. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Just like Christ is righteous. See you, brother. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil is sinning from the beginning. Right? For this purpose, the Son of the Most High manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's what it's all about. Christ is Satan. Christ is against Satan. Satan got all the juice in the earth right now. The earth is given to the hand of the wicked. All these demonic, satanic spirits that run throughout the earth. All over America, right here in New Haven, Connecticut, evil as can be. But Christ was manifested to kill off the wicked acts. Listen, they can't approach to this stuff here, man. They're evil. They can't even step up to this word. They're too wicked. Read on that. First child. They're too wicked and too simple. They can't step to this word. If you're wicked in your mind, if you're wicked in your heart, you got to get that out. You got to kill evil thoughts, and you got to practice right works. Or you can't approach Christ, you can't approach us.